that Jesus had compassion on the multitude. The disciples were still yet trying to learn all about Christ and what he really was about. Remember at one point he said to his disciples, I've been with you all this time and you still don't know uh, who I am really in essence. Nevertheless, the word of God says that when they saw the multitude, Jesus was moved with compassion. Now, I know that there are times when we want the crowd to go away and we want to, you know, minimize the time we spend with those who have a need. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus was moved with compassion, although the disciples said, it's growing late, Master, and we must send these people somewhere else to buy food for themselves. Isn't it interesting how the thought of food came up? You know, we've always got to eat something because if we don't have food, then we've got a problem. So he says it's getting late, Master, and uh, they, they'll need food. So in, in the other areas of the scripture, you will see that uh, different writers had a little extra to say about this particular event. But nevertheless, they were saying, uh, in other words, they said, Master, it's just not enough here. Jesus responded to them and said, uh, how is it that you don't understand what I'm about and who I am? How is it that you don't understand that in me you can have all things if you trust and believe in me? And they began to break down amounts of money. Master, we don't have enough money to feed all of these people. We just don't have enough. Jesus was allowing them to see that I am the Christ. I am the great provider. You must, it was a test for the disciples to see exactly who he was in the midst of whatever the situation looked like. For it looked as if it could not happen. It looked as if there was no way Jesus was going to be able to feed all of these people. But Jesus allowed those disciples to learn a lesson in this text. So the word of God says, he answered unto them and said, uh, you feed them. Let me just break it down in simple terms. They were, they were wondering how in the world are we going to feed? The, Jesus said, you're going to feed them. Don't worry about it. So what he wanted them to do, and this is what we must do, he said, what I want you to do is check out your resources. There are times when you must check out what you have. If you only have $10 in your pocket, pull that $10 out. Check out your resources. How is it, how, how can I make $10 multiply? Remember we talked about increase? Sometimes you have to check your resources out, figure it out. Sometimes, you know, you can work a scheme or a plan out let me just change that. Not a scheme, but a plan. A plan. I don't like that word scheme because it sounds like trickery is in that. But you can work out a plan where God can increase that $10 bill. First of all, your tithes come off the top. So that's a dollar to God. So what happens then, you have offerings you can bless somebody else with. And so if you bless them with a dollar, two dollars, still you have seven or eight dollars left. So still you have the majority of that $10. Isn't that right? Lord, have mercy. I can't count a little bit. So you've blessed somebody else, and you're blessed as well with that $10. Now what you're going to do with the rest of your money is decide, God, how much more can I be a blessing? Because somewhere along the line, while you're blessing others, God is already increasing that $10. You just hadn't received it yet, but I'm here to promise you that you will receive the blessing. So listen, he tells them, you're going to feed them. He tells them, go see. You check out the resources. And so what he did, he told them, and what I want you to do, I want you to break them up in companies. In other words, what Jesus was saying, what I want you to do is get vision. What I want you to do is get insight. What I want you to do is break them up in hundreds and fifties, and then I want you to envision every one of those people eating. What I want you to do is catch the vision because we're getting ready to see a miraculous work uh, in God through Christ. We're going to see him. So what happened, the word of God said that, is there not any, he says, is there, well, there's a little lad with five loaves and two fish. How can we feed uh, a multitude of people with five loaves and two fish? How can we be a blessing in the community with 
five loaves and two fish. Check out your resources. And then two, uh, determine how you're going to uh, view those re resources in terms of Christ. So the word of God said, Jesus said, bring those loaves and the fish to me. For see, you think it can't happen, but I'm here to show you that little becomes much in the master's hands. So the word of God said that he took those loaves and the fish. And the word of God said, first of all, you've got to bless. He blessed what he already had. He blessed what he had, looked up to the Lord. He looked up to God, rather, and he blessed and gave thanks for what he already had. Some murmur and complain, this is all I got, Lord. This is all I have, Lord. But he see what you have, and he knows how to give the increase. So he looked up and said, God, thank you for the five loaves and the two fish. Amen? So isn't that awesome? Then the word of God said, he himself took the five loaves and, bro and he broke them. In other words, he break them and he break the fish and then he gave. So he break, which um, represented that a spontaneous act. Okay, listen to me very carefully. Let me get down here. See, because disciples have to learn how to break, you know, understand when Jesus break the bread and when he give it to you, what to do with the bread. So the Bible says that he break the bread. And that was a uh, 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 spontaneous act. And then the word of God said, then he gave to the disciples. So that meant it was a continuous act. All right? So what happens, Jesus is breaking the bread. He has those 12 disciples. So as he breaks the bread, he tells the disciples, notice this very carefully. He tells the disciples, you are going to feed the people. So the word of God says that as he break, he gave to them, and they began to go out into those companies and those different uh, uh, areas, and he be they began to feed those people that were there. Now, first of all, the word of God said that you get the men first. And the scripture says it was 5,000. Now for all of those who want to theorize and be analytical, the word said it was 5,000 men that he fed. Amen? So as, as they served all down through those companies, things were beginning to happen. It didn't become much until Christ himself touched it, broke it, and began to give it out. So you've got to take your finances, look up to God, bless them, give thanks, break it, share with somebody else, and then give to them so they can give to somebody else. So as you do that, then you watch God as he continues to cause that little to become much as he miraculously multiplies what you have. You don't believe it. You're looking at me mighty straight. Well, I don't have very, Well, take that and you check out your own resources and see and tr trust God. Try him and see won't he bless what you have already. So the, isn't it amazing And when you study the area of Scripture, the Bible says they continue to feed. And then in one study, Reverend Moyer, it said that those disciples kept coming back and Jesus kept breaking. He kept breaking from those five loaves and the two fish. They kept coming back. And I imagine the disciples said, wow, Jesus, where in the world is all this food coming from? They kept coming back and getting more from the master and kept delivering it to the people and meeting the needs of the people. Little becomes much in the master's hands. And the word of God said that every one of them did eat and they were filled. Nobody should be hungry here in the church today. That's because somebody should have a sense of discernment to know that somebody's hungry and those that are sitting back hungry should tell somebody, I don't have anything to eat.